Hi everyone. Good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to the Mumbai India Dynamic 365 Power Platform User Group. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Rakesh. I am Senior Solution Architect and Center of Excellence Lead for Dynamic 365 Finance and Operations with TCS. I am specialized on finance and operation app side. The aim of cross apps learning series is all about of platform converges to share out of the box features, our learnings, best practices and some of the key design consideration as well as troubleshooting and performance guidelines. Before we get into a discussion, let us relook at the objective and the format of this learning series, especially for those who have joined today. It's a six day sessions, one hour each week. So far we have completed three sessions and this is our fourth session in the series. So let us look at the uh, agenda today and the topic for the next two weeks. So uh, just a quick recap. So we have started with basics of dual right and virtual table or entity and how they are helping to resolve the complex challenges of data unification as well as the unified experience for the end customer. In the last week sessions, uh, we talked about a key design consideration while working with the cross apps. And today we are going to talk about uh, more on detail of troubleshooting, the couple of scenarios around the troubleshooting and the performance guidelines. In terms of agenda today, we will start with the dual right alerts in terms of setup and the error management capability of dual right, followed by some of the key con scenario consideration for troubleshooting. We will also look at the performance considerations and later on, we will see real time transactions uh, sync process uh, flow end to end flow, how it works behind the scenes. As mentioned earlier, our aim is to share our learning, which can be useful during your implementation end to end process. So let us talk about the alerts. So you, as you might have seen on the docs.microsoft.com as well as some of the blog references, Dual right provides a rich capability to set up an alert by sending an email. This features is useful when there is a maintenance in one of the apps that is customer engagement or finance and operation app or FNO. Think about a scenario where one of the app is available or maybe unavailable for some known or unknown reason. And then based on your setup, dual right will send the automatic email as well as it will also allow you to pause or you know stop the maps capability. After you fix the issue uh, and everything is running, then you can change the uh, status uh, from resume uh, to the that map again and this setup of alert has to be done by the admin user. You can enable the different types of errors, especially in a scenario where unplanned maintenance is there or error are happening in the background and uh, it will send email, email messages to the admin to ensure the, uh, the health of the integration. Once you have created the alert, then you can enable or disable. It is based on your again scenario. And one of the key thing uh, which I would like to mention here uh, to be part of the consideration is that once you enable or disable the map, then you need to restart the map to take that effect of the new changes. So whenever you are doing any changes uh, for the alert for enabling or for disabling, you need to restart the map to get that, you know, to take that effect of new changes that you are applying on that particular alert setting. 
let us move on to our next slide so i just try to capture the uh, snap of the alert setting how it uh, look like and where to go if you navigate to the system admin module of finance and operation app and the data management workspace and then the dual right tile uh, you will see the dual right uh, uh, functionality and then there you can select the option called alert so once you navigate to that part the alert setting options right uh, which will allow you to configure the map and it and, and and point to be noted here it won't be a map specific so if you are thinking that i want to you know uh, set up the alert for a specific map it is not a map specific it will be applicable for all the map so once you click on the alert options uh, you will see uh, option called uh, the you will see option called the create alert setting and in this create alert setting which will take you through the different options uh, which i just try to add in the uh, in the subsequent slide uh, with the different options to configure for alert and i'm going to walk you through that one by one okay in a subsequent slide as i mentioned earlier we will have an ability to enable and disable the alert as i mentioned in the previous slide as well and then alert setting uh, name conditions as highlighted in this slide deck you can also define the time period uh, for this particular uh, setting so as you can see here so you can also do the enablement and disablement of that particular settings uh, of that alert so you can also define the time uh, period as mentioned earlier for example uh, if if there is an application uh, error happening in a one minute then uh, and then you would like to just pause or stop that map based on that condition which you can easily do that uh, with the help of this option in terms of uh, different types of errors uh, which allow you to select one or multiple error types based on your need uh, which we'll try to highlight in a in a subsequent slide and one thing uh, which i would like to address as part of the previous slide is the uh, the email address okay so if there is a condition where or if there is a business need where you need a multiple email address to be assigned as part of your alert setting then you can use a comma separator so it does provide it does provide a capability to define the multiple email addresses uh, by using the comma separator now let us double click uh, more on this uh, different types of errors and their uses of uh, Uh, in the in your respect to business scenario so as we speak there are total eight types of uh, errors supported by the dual right so let us go one by one so microsoft has announced these errors descriptions to understand the issue by the user so that or maybe admin so that if there is a need to detail under if there is a need to dig out more on the issue to understand why this error is coming what is the reason behind so that was the whole idea behind on the uh, you know the friendly error description so let's go one by one so let us take a first which is application error uh, which means uh, there is a data validation in the background for example uh, there is some incorrect or bad data and while while data is synchronizing from fno to c right so this is where this kind of error uh, the dual right will show in the uh, in the in the in the application the next error is uh, error 400 which indicates the bad request it means uh, fno is restarting or any other error while dual right uh, making a data call in the background the next error is uh, Why not two, which is related to bad gateway? It means a target application is unexpectedly not ready to handle the request. Let us move on to next slide and see the remaining errors. So the next one is four not one and four not three. So both the errors are typically related to a permission issues either in a, a FNO or a data was site. So let us take an example. Uh, maybe permissions; those are missing uh, related to application users, or maybe uh, 
the uh, missing roles in the FNO, or maybe uh, Azure Active Directory client ID is missing in the Active Directory form in the FNO. So if these are the uh, missing components, then you will get this 401 or 403 er errors in the dual write. The next error is 503, uh, which is service is unavailable. It means application is down. In this scenario, we can plan for outage after discussion with business. So we will uh, go away from this type of error. And in the unplanned scenario where application unexpected down or a crash, then you will see this kind of a error of uh, 503. The next error is uh, error uh, number is 429, uh, which is related to too many requests. That means it's a throttling. It's a case of throttling. So let us uh, move on to our next slide and try to see uh, more in the detail of error management and the uh, the queued record uh, insights. So you might have seen in the first or a second discussion in both the discussion uh, of the series, we try to touch base very high level the approach of initial seeing table maps, activity log and the uh, the queued record. And this is just an extension of that discussion. So let us understand the error management for queued record. So there are some limitations uh, when a uh, when a map is a pause. Uh, that is number of records and the number of time uh, that is available uh, during the seven days of time. So think about a scenario: you queued a record and you just wanted to uh, resume it back. So there is a time window of uh, duration of seven days. And there is also a limitation of number of records. If you look at this uh, slide and the, uh, the snapshot that I have shared, uh, you can see the uh, number of records in this case, which I which I use all product map, uh, which I queued and which I paused. And then you can see the total queue record uh, count is three, as well as the integration key details and the other timestamp information. Uh, so that based on that, uh, uh, the technical person can deep dive more on this and try to understand uh, why these errors, whether those records are valid or if they want to resume it back, they can resume it back. Now let us try to see uh, the uh, more in detail of catch up errors of uh, error management category, right? So if you look at there is a dedicated sections on the particular map, which is called at catch up errors. So dual write provides its ability to retry the selected or or maybe uh, all records. So think about a scenario when you resume a pause records and for some valid or invalid reason uh, it failed and then you wanted to retry uh, that selected or the multiple records, right? So uh, that capability can be used by navigating to this uh, catch up errors option. At the same time, if you look at the uh, one of the column called payload. Uh, and if you want to just download the payload information, you can also download the payload information in the form of XML and you can view that information. Once the retry is successful, then it will be marked as a completed. I hope uh, you have now got a good understanding about alert setup, different types of errors, error management for queued records and the retry mechanism. If you have any questions, uh, you can use a chat window and I'll try to address towards the end. Now let us move on to uh, the next slide uh, as per the agenda, which is the troubleshooting. And in my view, uh, in most of the scenarios in FNO or maybe in a cross app scenarios, uh, most of the time it is very difficult to troubleshoot the particular scenario of that particular error. Why this error is coming? What is the reason behind whether it's an issue from source or a target, whether it's an issue with the setup or whether it's an issue with the, the transaction that is trying to synchronize between both the applications. So that is where I'm just trying to highlight uh, the couple of scenarios over here. So I just try to address uh, almost total five scenarios uh, just to give you a high level view and some of the scenario I just try to capture uh, the detail view based on uh, my understanding in the implementation process. Okay, so let us 
look at the scenario number one. So the scenario number is one is is related to the missing columns uh, from the maps, and this issue occurs when you have a customized map or you have a standard entity where you have added a new fields on a standard entity, and once you try to perform the mapping fields, you realize that some of the fields are missing. And to address this issue, uh, there are two steps to be followed. Uh, one is to, you know, uh, look at the data entity. So as mentioned in the presentation, they get the snapshot. Uh, in the FNO, we have a data entities, whereas in the data verse, uh, we have a tables. And and in any given scenarios, a field is to be present in both the side for mapping. Otherwise, you are uh, transaction will not be flow uh, and their map will not be in a uh, in a in a correct state and it will be in always error state right so if the field is missing from a fno then you can perform these steps the first step is to refresh the uh, data uh, entity you can navigate to the uh, dixf parameter and then try to click on this uh, refresh entity option which will refresh the data entity metadata Okay, uh, and if the field is missing from a data verse side, then uh, you can refresh the tables on the table maps. Okay, so that is the uh, difference. Uh, try to compare. If you look at this bulleted point, the point number one and the point number two, which I'm trying to highlight. So if I just try to repeat the same uh, same sentence again. So in FNO, if there is an issue with the missing fields uh, from the map. Then you can go and refresh the entity using the DIX uh, parameter form. And if the fields are missing from data verse side, then you can navigate to the uh, respective map and try to use the uh, function called refresh the table maps. And that is where, uh, at the same time, when you click on the refresh table option on the map, uh, behind the scene, uh, it, it calls the uh, data verse API to get the tables updated metadata. So think about a scenario that you have configured the table map and behind the scenes someone has modified the table schema in the dataverse. Then you need to use this refresh table option, which will try to update the uh, metadata uh, and through the data uh, to the to the through the API call. One of the thing uh, which I would like to just uh, mention here and keeping in mind while doing this all this activity, whether from a FNO perspective or from a dataverse perspective, uh, with respect to uh, refreshment uh, refresh of this activity, then there should not be any data sync or import or export activity uh, is running in the background. So if you are doing this activity and uh, in the background someone is doing the import and export process, then this whole process is going to be stopped. Okay, so just keeping in mind that when you try to refresh this activity, uh, there should not be any data sync or data import or export process uh, running in the background. Now let us move on to our scenario number two. Okay, let us move on to scenario number two. So the scenario number two is related to error code is 403, that is bad request. It means it indicates the missing permissions. It can be permissions on data words or, or Azure Active Directory client ID, which is mapped to uh, in the FNO, or uh, maybe it is configured in FNO, but it is not mapped with the proper admin user privileges, or maybe some issues uh, with the incorrect client ID. For example, that uh, you have configured the Azure Active Directory client uh, for FNO, but for some valid reasons, uh, you have copied the incorrect client ID. Uh, that is also one of the scenarios that I have personally seen. So try to 
validate uh, the correct client ID uh, while copying from Azure Active Directory client uh, into the uh, Azure Active Directory form of uh, FNO. In this scenario, we get this error and there are two ways to resolve this error. One, if the setup is not proper or and, and, and if the uh, and if it is already set up and maps are running and suddenly there are permissions issues in the dataverse, it is always you know advisable to validate the security in dataverse in the security or maybe in the team roles uh, for example uh, by assigning the admin privileges system admin role or maybe your custom role so as you can see here uh, in my environment i try to assign the system admin role but in your case uh, you may have your um, custom role and that custom role can be also assigned to this particular team Now let us uh, look at the scenario number three. So scenario number three is related to initial sync. Okay. And I have seen this particular issue multiple times uh, during the uh, during the implementation process. Uh, typically when when we enable the uh, initial sync. So as you can see here in the initial sync, uh, there are there are basically uh, four steps to be followed, if at all, if you want to re resolve this issue. Uh, one thing is that uh, <clears throat> when you enable the initial sync, uh, which has corresponding to your DI accept uh, export and import projects, and it is always recommended to check uh, the DIXF import and export project. If the execution status of that project is successful or failed. Initial sync process uses the DIXF packages APIs uh, in the background to import or export the data uh, between both the apps. And it uses the uh, CSV Unicode pattern. In case uh, of a DIXF project execution is failed, then uh, look at uh, the the DIXF issue by searching the inside data project. So what you can do, you can just take the, uh, the map first four digit characters and try to filter with search with the wild character uh, search in the dual write uh, projects detail as mentioned in the present as mentioned in this presentation deck and the slide deck. So uh, let us assume that uh, you identify issue and correct the data in this case. Okay. Uh, as part of this initial sync, uh, and you can now ready to run the rerun options as highlighted in the slide, uh, the snap number, snapshot number two. Okay, so there you will get a two options. Uh, first option is rerun execution, and the second one is rerun execution without errors, uh, which allows you to pick up the same file. So take an example of if you want to go with the uh, the rerun execution option. So in that option allow you to pick up the same file and rerun that correct data again. However, in the case of rerun execution without error option, it means you want to leave the error behind and then rerun the execution once which are not in an error state. So it will simply rerun the execution for those which are not in error stage. If you look, if you just select the option two, which is rerun without errors. One of the things which I would like to highlight here, the change tracking option. So if you have a change tracking uh, enable for particular data entity and that data entity is being used uh, in the dual write map. In that case, uh, when you start the initial sync and next time, it will only execute for those change records because you have already enabled the change tracking. Right? And if you don't want to do that as part of the initial sync, then you need to disable it, uh, that change tracking. So it will start behaving uh, as a default behavior of initial sync, which will take the all the data from your source, from where you are enabling the change tracking, and it will push it to the target environment correctly. So just point to be uh, reiterated again. If you have a change tracking enable, try to make sure that 
the change tracking is enable and or disable uh, based on your scenario if you are trying to do the initial thing if you are trying to face any challenges try to leverage the re-execution or re-execution without error option again it will be based on uh, your particular need of that business scenario so let us move on to our next slide where we will talk about more on our scenario number two I have seen this scenario multiple times uh, for a complex filters that have been applied on a specific map, whether it's a custom map or a standard map. And uh, for some reason, uh, uh, we could not able to figure out or troubleshoot this sort of scenario because filters are more in complex. If I talk about from a financial operation app perspective, multiple and conditions and multiple or conditions. So. So these are the two possible steps uh, that you may need to perform uh, to troubleshoot this particular issue. The very first is, uh, point is you need to navigate to FNO and try to run the Renable class. Uh, you will find this detail on this uh, docs.microsoft.com site, which will allow you to build the Renable class. And that Renable class will tell you the incorrect syntax that are being used in the particular uh, particular table map uh, filters. Okay, and it is important to make a note that filter should be applied on a field present on a dual right map. If you try to see this from a CRM or a customer engagement perspective, then uh, you need to use this uh, O data URL which is pretty simple as compared to the FNO. And as soon as you uh, amend or append your information of uh, particular uh, details of your application URL and the table information and the filters, fields and all, then this OData URL will uh, execute and will check the errors, if at all, if there is error in the filters section of dual right map for a uh, customer engagement fields. Now let us look at the scenario number five. So the scenario number five is very common uh, and I have personally seen this multiple times uh, whenever there is a database refresh happens. Okay. Uh, and this is pretty very common scenario. Uh, however, sometimes uh, you may get uh, multiple issues in this database refresh. So I just try to share my uh, learning uh, in this slide deck again uh, with the help of the information that is available on talks.microsoft.com. So when you try to uh, do the database refresh, uh, these are the high level and the detailed steps that I have tried to capture. The very first point which I'm trying to highlight, you need to stop all the running maps. Uh, so, and then, then unlink the environments that will give you ability to start working on the next steps. Okay. So if you look at on the FNO side, uh, we have dual right project configuration table, which stores all the maps. And each map has two records, one for update and another is for delete. If these records are not empty uh, or these tables are or these tables uh, are not empty with these records, then it will need, then it is it will lead to orphan records with respect to dual right project configuration table. The second table is uh, a field configuration, which is a dual right project field configuration table, uh, which holds the information of all the fields configuration. Third table is uh, the business event definition, which holds the event information. So whenever you try to do the database refresh, try to make sure to delete the data from these three tables. However, uh, if you have access to SQL, you can perform the SQL or maybe you can just navigate to the dual right project configuration entity and this entity can be used uh, to delete the records. However, uh, you can use this uh, entity through Excel add-in and then try to 
uh, update the information then and then again publish the information and then relearn reeling the environments uh, again okay and then uh, once you complete the reeling the environment process then you can enable the maps uh, you can also navigate to this uh, docs.microsoft.com site where uh, you will see all the detailed information about uh, database refresh and the detailed steps. But just uh, for the benefit of everyone understanding, I just try to capture this uh, list of steps with the snapshots from a CRM or customer engagement perspective, as well as uh, as well as the FNO perspective. One thing I would like to highlight here uh, in the in the customer engagement app perspective, there is only one table which you need to clear the data, which is dual write runtime configuration, and that table can be found by navigating to application and the settings and the advanced filters, and then you try to you know uh, perform the next step as I mentioned previously, which is reeling the environment and enable the maps. Now let us try to understand the uh, basic of real time data synchronization process when you try to enable through a, uh, through the dual write. Uh, we will go in more detail in a subsequent slide, but it is very important to understand when the basics of uh, the real time synchronization. So one thing I would like to notice here uh, or highlight here, filter the evaluation, uh, which is uh, must to give the desired result. So if you are adding a custom filters on a standard map or maybe a custom map, please make sure the filter evaluation is right in terms of and condition, in terms of or conditions. Otherwise, you will lead to error and then that error probably will take a lot of time to troubleshoot. Another thing which I would like to highlight as part of basics of this real time sync data process flow is if there are data sources which are marked as a read only and outer joins are not tracked uh, in the dual write process. At the same time, the data sources which do not have any map fields are also not tracked. So these two points to be uh, taken into consideration uh, when you try to see any errors or issues uh, in a real time data sync uh, using the dual rights. Uh, when you have validate field mapping on a dual right projects, right? And if the fields are missing in the mapping from customer engagement to FNO, then it will also not be tracked. So. This is also one of the points to be taken into consideration. As mentioned in the previous slide, uh, you need to always validate and check these below tables in the financial operation app, uh, whether the mapping records are exist or not. The first one is dual write project configuration. Second one is a dual write project field configuration. And third one is the business events definition. There is a uh, one more point which uh, would like to highlight here. If a modification on the map field is happen, and then only a changes will be triggered to FNO. However, in the case of C, all fields modification will trigger in dual right. So this is also one of the point to be noted uh, in terms of understanding of real time data sync process. Another point uh, is to be highlighted: the the data sources, those are part of your dual right map should be in a same transaction scope okay uh, otherwise it will lead to a real time data sync issue last but not least is the uh, insertion updation or or maybe a set based operation process right so if you have a data entity which has do update do insert or set based operations or skip business events uh, methods uh, data methods is marked, then it will not be handled by dual rights. So these are the point to be taken into consideration and having an understanding of these points will help you to 
understand if at all if there is any error happens during the real time seeing process between uh, customer engagement app or a finance and operation app unidirectional or bidirectional both now let us move on to a next slide and try to double click more on the debugging options those are available in the uh, dual write capability so you might have noticed uh, when there is a debug option enable uh, it will it always help developer or consultant to understand the error message uh, what happens behind this is a technical error message if i put it in a uh, in the right term right so there is a entity called dual write project configuration entity to be used uh, to set the each debug mode uh, flag to true by default it is false so you need to enable that flag by using the excel add in and then you need to publish the changes so as soon as you publish the changes behind the scenes uh, it sets the parameter of that particular field as a true uh, dual write error lock this is also another table which holds the all the log information uh, when you start enabling the uh, debug is debug mode option on or a true and then you can fire a query and try to see the error message in more detail one thing i would like to highlight here in a tier 2 environment uh, in some of the cases it is difficult to get access of azure sql then in that case you can use the sys table browser menu item uh, with the help of url and we can view the whole table data uh, in detail as mentioned in the presentation slide or a snapshot you will see i just try to highlight a two column in my environment there were no error that is the reason you could see here there is no data associated with this table called dual write error log but in your case you might have data but the point to be highlighted about these two columns which is first one is a detail error message which will give you a detail information about that error messages uh, of that particular uh, map and the activity id so the activity id is nothing but Uh, the id which is you can use for more telemetry assessment for the lcs so you can use the activity id which is being recorded here in this table and utilize that uh, this activity id for the lcs so if you have access to lcs or maybe you request your admin to look into it you can share this activity id and uh, the admin person can look into the lcs uh, telemetry and then you can try to see uh, what is the possible cause for this particular issue right so that is where uh, this debugging options of uh, dual write project configuration entity comes into picture and this is very specific to when the information is of a data is flowing from fno to customer engagement now let us look at the debugging options from customer engagement to fno so those who are uh, coming from a background of customer engagement uh, technical side might be aware um, there is a concept of uh, plugin tool you can install the plugin tool and try to analyze the detail error uh, which is nothing but a verbose and that verbose will tell you uh, what is the reason behind of that particular error message however one thing to be noted here is the the plugin uh, which actually being used before the data gets committed that's a pre commit plugin so you can uh try to find the uh, the column name uh, call as name and then you can uh, use this uh, plugin name called microsoft.dynamics.integrator.dualwriteruntime.plugins pre commit plugin right so then this plugin will tell you the detailed information about the error log uh, as we have seen in the previous slide uh, from a fno to c and this is reference to c to fno let us move on to next slide and try to understand more on the performance consideration okay and in my view it is very important to understand this consideration and that will help to define your solution design that will also define your data migration activity correctly that will also define to set the correct information in front of your customer Uh, when there are any performance issues happens uh, for dual writes so let us start one by one so it is always recommend to stop the dual write maps 
during the data migration process. So think about a scenario, one of your team is doing the activity of data migration in a uh, tier two environment or maybe in a data migration environment. And at the same time, another team is also working on fixing of dual write issue and uh, they started facing some challenges. So it is always recommend to, you know, stop the dual write map during the data migration process. And this will, this will help to avoid the unnecessary business event triggers because when you try to enable the dual write and at the same time you, you enable your data migration process behind the scene dual write uses the business events. Uh, I think you might have seen in the previous slide as well, right? So, uh, so those unnecessary business event triggers uh, will be stopped when you uh, stop the dual write maps. Currently project execution limit is uh, to uh, 500k rows per execution per projects. If there is a more than uh, the 500k rows per, per execution per project, then it is recommended to migrate the data separately in FN1 and C. So what the point to be highlighted here is there is a limit defined uh, per execution per project, which is 500k and in your case, if it is going beyond this, then you need to relook at your migration strategy. You need to relook at the data import options from both the sites, FNO and customer engagement perspective. There was a limit of uh, 40 legal entity earlier. However, it is now increased to 250 legal entity uh, for the real time synchronization process. So in many implementation, I have seen there are 100 plus 150 plus legal entities, right? So in that case, and if you are still using the dual right, in those sort of scenario, keeping in mind that you need to update your application to the version 10 or 22, then only you can uh, leverage this new capability or a new limit of 250 legal entities for real time synchronization process. However, in the initial synchronization process, you might have seen the initial sync, right? Uh, it is still limited to the 40 legal entity due to the due to the larger data volumes and the associated operations. So point to be taken here, the 40 legal entity limit is still there, but that is only limited to the initial synchronization process. You can also use a computer or virtual columns uh, on a FNO data entity. However, try to validate the uh, your performance uh, whenever you try to have these sort of computed or virtual columns on your data entity. In most of the scenario, I have also seen whenever there is a performance uh, issue, try to we try to use the trace parser tool, right? But one thing which you need to make a note, the trace parser tool will allow you to identify the slow running queries or maybe query execution plan details, but it will not give you the insights of dual write maps. So basically the tier trace parser in the context of dual write can be used only for a slow query execution and not for the maps issue. But you can always use the uh, third party tools or a tool called Postman to validate the O data calls for a specific uh, data entity to analyze the issue. So think about a scenario uh, you started facing an issue for one of the map that map contain one or maybe more than two data sources. Uh, map started running very slow and you want to analyze with the help of the Postman tool. So you, what you can do, you can decouple that process, enable the Postman tool uh, with the O data call and try to see is there any business logic is creating a trouble for that dual write map. And in those sort of scenario, the Postman is the best tool to, uh, to decouple that uh, performance identification issue strategy. And that way you can say, or you can define the roadmap for the performance analysis process. I did by saying that the data entity has no issue. It may be issue in, uh, in some other area. So let us move on to next slide and try to see the real time transaction flow. It is very important to understand uh, the underneath mechanism of dual write, which will help you to troubleshoot the issue in a detailed manner. So I just try to highlight 
the uh, the pictorial view of entrant process, how it works behind the scenes. So if you look at the left side of the view, which indicates the table insert events in FNO, for those uh, dual write entity maps is enabled. So, so if you have a uh, if you have a data entity and those data entities are not part of your dual write, then these events will not be fired. Every operations happens is part of transaction log. All these transactions are handled as a one single transaction and may involve a single or a multiple table records. So basically, it's a single unit of work whenever you try to commit the multiple table records. And just before the transaction, there is the event of uh, TTS pre-commit, uh, which gets executed to call the dual time runtime. So as you can see here in the presentation date, you can see here uh, in the pre-commit event, it calls the, that is point number one, uh, try to call the dual write runtime. And this only happens, the entity, those are enabled for dual write. What it does in a, uh, if you look at the runtime, dual write runtime uh, perspective, what it does, it's bundled together all the requests and create a single batch in a synchronous way. In the case of Dataverse, Dataverse initiates the uh, its own transaction law, which is different than the financial operation apps compared to finance and operation app. And it validates what are the tables are modified and if it succeed, then it sends the success message to the dual write. So as you can see here in this slide deck, uh, which sends the information of success message to the dual time runtime and let allow the FNO to commit the transaction. So whenever the success message as part of response from dual writes, it gets validated by runtime and then it commits the information in the FNO. As mentioned in the previous slide and in the previous session as well, dual write is a tightly coupled system because of the uh, synchronous nature of the real time sync. Actually, it is a case of you know, the distributed transactions where the transactions are uh, synchronizing uh, over the wire and informations have been sending from uh, by direction from both the apps. Uh, one thing uh, which I would like to highlight here, a batch, and that batch must be successful in order to commit the single transaction. And that is how the, uh, the underneath mechanism of the success process flow. However, in the case of failure, uh, whenever any failure information happens, so which I try to highlight in this presentation day, which happens in the dataverse. So for some reason, the dataverse information that record is failed the failure message message sends back to a run a dual write runtime and the dual write dual write runtime uh, uh, allows fno to abort that whole process so no records are going to be committed in a fno and that is where the tts aborts uh, is going to be fired in case if there is a failure message from from the uh, from the data was perspective. Now let us move on to our next slide and uh, try to understand the uh, detail of real-time transaction consideration. You can read this slide from your left to right and just try to highlight the couple of observations from my end. One of the observations from FNO to Dataverse is number of transactions. Okay, And I would request you to refer to the Dataverse service protection API limit which is available on docs.micros.com, as well as your entitlement limit. So whenever the transactions are synchronizing from FNO to Dataverse, uh, there is a service protection API limit uh, is tagged along with the entitlement limit. However, in the case of number of records per transaction, which is a single call, uh, it limits to a thousand records. So think about a scenario, uh, you have a purchase order in FNO, and you want to share that information of purchase order through a dual rights for some valid reason in one of the case, or maybe a sales order uh, through a dual right. Then if that purchase order or sales order contain uh, a more than thousand 
records as a line, then that transaction is going to be failed because there is a limit of number of transaction per transaction from FNOP database. And why that limit is defined uh, by the dual write infrastructure only because of the dataverse comes with the service protection API limit and there is also entitlement limits. Uh, there is another point which I would like to highlight, which is a transaction limit, which is two minutes. So any transactions which gets initiated from your source to target, in this case, FNO to Dataverse, will have a two minutes of uh, transaction limit time on. So if your transaction is going more than two minutes, then you will get an error message of transaction limit. So these are the three points that I would like to highlight from FNO to Dataverse. At the same time, from a Dataverse to FNO, if there is any scenario where the Dataverse is Dataverse is going to synchronize, Dataverse is going to synchronize the data from Dataverse to FNO. Uh, so in this case, there is no limit uh, for FNO to uh, import a record in terms of number of transaction limit. However, uh, it is always advisable, uh, and, and I think on the doc.microsoft.com side as well, Microsoft is also recommended to uh, validate the priority based throttling, uh, but it is not strictly enforced uh, whenever the transactions are synchronized from, from Dataverse to FNO. In terms of number of records per transaction from Dataverse to FNO, uh, there is no limit as mentioned in the previous uh, point. However, the transaction must be complete in a two minutes of time. So in terms of synchronizing both the applications, FNO and Dataverse, uh, Microsoft has enabled these features forcefully when the data is being synchronized from Dataverse to FNO. So there will not be any data loss there will not be any data inconsistency, okay? That is where the point number two is uh, highlighting. Another point which need to be taken into consideration when the data is flow from Dataverse to FNO, which is nothing but your transaction limit. So think about a scenario that you are sending a transaction uh, and that transaction commitment time is more than a two minutes then your transaction is going to be failed, bound to be failed. That is how the, the underneath mechanism is designed from a Dataverse to FNO perspective. So again, just a quick recap. Uh, if you have a data flow from FNO to Dataverse, there is a transaction number of transaction limit defined based on the Dataverse service protection API limit and the entitlement limit. Uh, there is a limit defined for per transaction uh, that is the maximum limit is 1000 record as I mentioned in uh, uh, earlier as part of the sales orders or a purchase order lines and there is also a transaction limit of two minutes. However, from a data verse to FNO perspective, there is no transaction limit in terms of number of transactions. However, it is always advisable to look at the priority based throttling but it is not strictly enforced. Last but not the least uh, is the transaction limit. There is also limit of transaction limit of two minutes uh, in terms of commitment time of this two minutes. And why this two minutes? Uh, because if two minutes does not only consider the record commitment time, it also consists of your network latency. So taking into consideration both the aspect uh, you need to design your solution uh, appropriately okay so i hope uh, i hope i have tried to cover all the aspects which is required for you to troubleshoot the issue if you have the dual write infrastructure is enabled also try to cover the performance challenges and what tool tooling experience will help you to dig out more from a FNO perspective and from a Dataverse perspective. And we also try to touch base on the real-time transactions um, insights. So I think that's all uh, for now. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask, else we will conclude this session for now. I'll give you two minutes.
Okay, so I'll take it as a no. So just to give you a quick highlight on our next session. So our next session will be on ALM and the extensibility of uh, dual write map. We will also try to touch base uh, on the error handling scenarios. Uh, we will try to trigger, uh, see the custom triggers on the lookups from a customer engagement perspective. We will also try to see some of the integration key scenarios and the filters. So I think thank you very much. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks once again.